We're joined now by the Chief Scientist to the Department for the Environment, Professor Robert Watson. Welcome to the Daily Thank Politics. You. We've had suppression of scientific data, we've had exaggeration of global warming impacts, and the maltreatment of skeptics. What's gone wrong? The evidence for human-induced climate change is extremely solid. There is no question, however, there have been some mistakes in some of the IPCC documents, and we have to understand how those mistakes got through and rectify it for the future, because clearly it is undermining public confidence in the evidence. But as I say, the evidence is absolutely solid. I understand that's your position, but, you know, the first chair of the IPCC, John Houghton, I think he was your predecessor, because you were chairman of the IPCC too, weren't you? I chaired the overall IPCC. You're right. Uh, he said, quote, unless we announce disasters, no one will listen. I disagree with John on that. The That's basic what's evidence happening. the basic evidence that the earth is warming, that extreme events are likely to become more frequent. That's a very serious issue because it affects agriculture, water resources, human health and coastal erosion. So disasters are not needed to say to the public and to governments this is an issue we need to deal with. Well, let's take uh, this lit w water. We've now had the example whereby the IPCC, in its synthesis report, the most important part, which Mr. Pachari, Dr. Pachari, has control, said that there, was a there would be a 50% drop in crop yields in Africa from, uh, by 2020. We now discover that that um, is based on an advocacy group in Canada, on the basis of one scientist in Morocco who's not even a climate scientist. Indeed, he's more involved in carbon trading. And even he was only referring to Morocco. How can you take it seriously? Well, as I said in the Times article only yesterday, that again is the type of information that should never have been seen in the IPCC. It meant the author misused information and it means the peer review of both experts and governments missed it. We have to tighten up the preparation and the peer review process. You're the scientific advisor, didn't you see it? Um, I was not involved in the fourth assessment report at that but you must have read it. At that it's 6,000 pages. But you're I was the, the chief, chief science si advisor. You're uh, advising our climate change minister. Not then. I was the chief scientist of well, the World Bank. Well, do you hope we can catch up now? Fun. Oh, yeah, and them. that's why I said yesterday well, it was a fundamental mistake. Same as I said it was a fundamental mistake on the Himalayan glaciers. So as soon as these mistakes came to light, I've been interviewed by both television and I, I understand and that. And, and we're grateful for to have you here today. But when you, it, you don't really need the Sunday Times Insight team to get down to the bottom of this. So much of what the IPCC has told us is peer-reviewed science turns out to be sourced to advocacy groups, green lobbyists who are not peer-reviewed and have a vested interest. Why didn't you spot that in the IPCC report as a former chairman? As a former chairman, I was working by that time on many other issues for the World Bank on development, biodiversity, agriculture. I was not actually involved in the climate debate at that particular time. This is why when these mistakes are coming to light, we need to bring them to light same mistakes were made, but this is a very, very small part of the IPCC documents, a very minor well, part. Well, except that at the moment we're just beginning to go through it, perhaps with the kind of scrutiny that we should have gone through it from the start. And every time we do, something pops up. I apologize for saying that Ed Miliband is your boss. By the way, it is, of course, Hillary Benn uh, is, is, is your boss. Uh, one big mistake to me. <laughs> um, let, uh, but, and it's not even peer reviewed. Yeah. Absolutely. But, uh, I mean, you take the Glacier Gate, where the mistake was egregious and just clear nonsense based on one man, Dr. Pachauri. When the head of the IPCC, when faced with the information from India's leading glaciologist, dismissed the glaciologist as voodoo science. I agree with you. So that was a fundamental error why would by the that? IPCC and by Pachori. He should have gone back and personally checked he resign, what the evidence was. He That's going to be a choice of himself and the governments what who elected think? him. In my opinion, Dr. Pachori has to ask himself, is he still credible? And the governments of the world has to ask, is he still credible? Well, let's just remind our viewers that he not only did he dismiss it as voodoo scientist, but as the original uh, chap who came up with this business of the glaciers disappearing by 2035, he has hired for his own lobby group and think tank and has used him to get money from the European Union and from the Carnegie Endowment in America to investigate this 2035 disappearance which no longer exists. Well, 
the key point that needs to be made is we need to understand how climate change is affecting the glaciers. Clearly the Himalayas, like the European glaciers, are indeed receding. That have been 20... for over 100 years. Exactly, and it indeed are increasing the rate of and... disappearance due to human-induced well, climate Well, actually, the, the, the leading scientist, the leading uh, glaciologist in India says that's not true. Uh, that in fact there is no increase of a, no sign of a rate of increase in recent years. They are overall uh, declining, but it could take over 350 oh, years to, to do so. Sure. So he doesn't see any evidence of global warming. And indeed, on the western Himalayas, the glaciers are growing in size. Well, indeed, you'd expect and, some of the very high temperate glaciers to actually grow because there'll be more precipitation. And you told us, indeed, or, or the chief scientist, as he was then, David King, told us that Kilimanjaro Glacier was disappearing uh, uh, because of global warming. And the IPCC report of 2000 said so, and it's had to retract that as well because all the evidence shows that's more to do with precipitation and deforestation. Well, the combination of warmer temperatures and changes in precipitation are both related to climate change. So if there's less precipitation due to climate change, that is a factor. So we need to look at both the warming effect and whether there is more or less precipitation. So that indeed is a self-consistent story. Al Gore uh, called you hero of the planet. <laughs> Because you are fully signed up to the IPCC agenda. Yes, I've been an author, so, a co-chair, and I chaired the overall thing. And you, you once told us that temperatures would increase by six degrees in the century. What we said is by the year 2100, yeah, well, that's the depending century. on what the emissions of greenhouse gases were, yeah. the Earth could warm a further 1.4 to 6.4 degrees by but, 2100. But you emphasised the six when you made it, because I've seen your statements. Uh, do you still stick with that? Yes. You do. Don't you think the government needs someone who's a little bit more neutral on this matter, rather than committed? Because given your background, and you've been long involved in it, you have a long history in it, you've distinguished uh, in this area, you couldn't really give advice any different from what you give, could you? The advice I give is based on very sound evidence. And indeed, it's based not only the observations of change in atmospheric concentration, changes in the Earth's climate, and based on the best com computer modeling, not only in the UK, but across but, the world. I guess it's absolutely irrefutable I, that the Earth's climate is changing. In, in your view, but I just guess my, my point is that ministers need objective scientific advice, not someone with a deep vested interest like you in the IPCC process. I have absolutely no vested interest in the IPCC process. Your whole career process. has been part of it. I have not been involved in it since 2002 when I last chaired it. What my interest is is quality science and making sure ministers here and abroad and, have the best advice. And it's clear from what's coming out from the IPCC that contrary to what we all thought a while ago, Huge parts of this are not quality science. No, very small parts of it. Really? A few sentences in 6,000 pages. Absolutely unacceptable yeah. mistakes, but the large majority of the IPCC, which is absolutely peer-reviewed by all governments of the world, is absolutely sound. Over 40 references in the IPCC to give it as a source is to the WWF. Well, the WWF, it some of their work is peer reviewed. Review. Oh, no, Most so, of it isn't. But the point know. about it is there's some very okay. fine work that is not in the refereed literature. As long as it's available, right. everyone can review it. Will. I, I think he's giving a perfectly good account, and you're being unnecessarily <laughs> bullish, Andrew, and I wonder why. It's my job. <laughs> yes, I suppose so. But, you know, I, I take your point that there is, going, there is something about, you know, kind of professional closure going on around the fringes here. You have environmental yeah. groups that are involved in getting their own, uh, you know, budgets in, in place and it's in their interests. You also have a problem that, that uh, you know, the problem you outlined, which is that it's the headline things that grab people. It's things like disappearing glaciers. And it is difficult, I think. There is, as I understand it, absolutely universal agreement among serious climatologists All right. in the world. We've heard that no. many, many times. Well, uh, uh, and it may or may not be true. We'll leave it hanging there. Dr. Watson, come back and see us. It'd be good to continue the dialogue. Thank, Thank you. you.